Welcome to today's reading for the Oxford Dreamline. The Oxford School District reminds you that great books are a passage into our dreams. Now for today's reading. Hi, I'm Hope Stewart and I'm a member of the Oxford softball team. I am so excited to be reading for the Oxford Dreamline today. Today I'm going to be reading Counting on Catherine, um, How Catherine Johnson Saved Apollo 13 by Helene Becker. Catherine loved to count. She counted the steps to the road, the steps to, up to church, the number of dishes and spoons she washed in the bright white sink. The only thing she didn't count were the stars in the sky. Only a fool, she thought, would try that. Even so, the stars sparked her imagination. What was out there? Catherine yearned to know as much as she could about numbers, about the universe, about everything. Catherine's boundless curiosity turned her into a star student. She was so bright, she skipped three whole grades. She was catapulted right past her brother. He wasn't too happy about that. By the time she turned 10, Catherine was ready for high school. But then America was legally segregated by race. Her town's high school didn't admit black students or of any age. Catherine burned with fury. She wanted more than anything to keep learning. There was still so much to know. Count on me, Catherine's father told her. By working night and day, he earned money to move the family back to town with the black high school. In the 1950s, the government's National Advisory Committee of Aeronautics hired thousands of new employees. It even started hiring black women as mathematicians. Catherine hired, heard about the mathematician jobs. Her heart raced with excitement. Perhaps her dream could come true after all. But when she applied for one of the positions, she was told they were already filled. Catherine had to wait a whole new year until new spots opened up. Her patience paid off. She got the job. After a few years, the Soviet Union sent a rocket ship into space, launching a space race with the United States. NACA was rolled into a new space agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Catherine was, now found herself at the heart of America's space program. She worked as computer. Electronic computers were not widely used yet, calculating long series of numbers. All the computers were women. They were given the tasks that men thought were boring and unimportant. That didn't bother Catherine. She knew that without her contributions, a spaceship couldn't reach its destination nor safely return to Earth. Here's why. Sending a rocket ship into space is like throwing a ball into the air. At first, the force of the throw sends the ball up, up, up. But as soon as its energy runs out, the ball path curves back toward the ground. Where it lands depends on what angle it's th thrown and how high and how fast it flew. Because math is a kind of language, Catherine could ask those questions. How high would the rocket ship go and how fast would it travel? Using numbers. And numbers would prove all the important answers. Where would it land? To find out, Catherine plotted the numbers she calculated on a graph. When she joined the points together, they formed a curved line. At one end of the line was Earth at the, rock, at the time the rocket ship launched. At the other was where Earth would be and the ship landed. Catherine's reputation for accuracy and strong leadership skills, she was known for asking plenty of questions, got her promoted to Project Mercury, a new project designed to send the first American astronauts into space. 
Mercury's mission was going to be dangerous. So dangerous that even the Project Star astronaut John Glenn refused to fly unless Catherine okayed the numbers. You can count on me, she said. Glenn's spacecraft Friendship 7 orbited Earth three times and returned home safely. Glenn became a national hero. Catherine was promoted again. Now she was asked to calculate the flight's path for Project Apollo, the first flight to the moon. Count on me, she said. On July 20th, 1969, the Apollo 11 astronauts walked on the moon. Their feet were celebrated around the world. The more triumphs followed. Apollo 12 rocketed to the moon in November 1969. Apollo 13 launched on April 11, 1970, but on the third day of Apollo 13's flight, the worst thing happened in an explosion in space. Could the crippled spaceship make it to the moon? And if it didn't, would it be able to get back home to Earth? Three astronauts on board were in gravel peril. Commander Jim Love told Mission Control, Houston, we had a problem. Back on Earth, Katherine Johnson got a phone call. Her flight path calculations would have to be done all over again, and perfectly. It would be the toughest challenge of her life. Katherine told Mission Control, you can count on me. She rolled up her sleeves, took a deep breath, and began doing math. She worked hard and fast. A few hours later, Katherine's calculations were finished. The flight path to return home would take the ship around the far side of the moon, from there, the moon's gravity would act like a slingshot to zip the ship back to Earth. To go home, the crew of Apollo 13 would have to follow Catherine's course exactly by burning off fuel at precise intervals. If the astronauts made a mistake, their ship would drift through space forever. Catherine waited anxiously to hear the astronauts report. Finally, it crackled over the loudspeakers. We got it. Apollo 13 was back on track. Catherine Johnson had done it. She brought back Apollo 13 home. She was no longer the kid who dreamed of what lays beyond the stars. She was now a star herself.